Be the Talk, Episode 146, featuring Marcus Aurelius Anderson. Welcome to Be the Talk. We go behind the talk seven days a week for tips and techniques to help you change the world. I'm Nathan Eckel, and a talker myself, I'm interviewing others who change the world with their talk. You can too, even if you've never given a talk before. Let's get started with today's show. We are live with Marcus Aurelius Anderson. Marcus, are you ready to talk? Man, I am so ready to talk. You're going to have to tell me to shut up by the time I get going. It's going to be amazing. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Marcus Aurelius Anderson is an author, keynote speaker, and mindset coach to leaders, executives, and CEOs. While preparing to deploy with the United States Army, Marcus suffered a severe spinal injury that left him paralyzed. After dying on the operating table twice, the, save, the surgeons saved his life, but told him he'd never walk again. Having no other option, Marcus started doing some brutally honest soul searching, looking for the lesson to be learned from his injury. Once he started seeing his adversity as a gift instead of a curse, something miraculous began to happen. Marcus Aurelius Anderson, welcome to the talk. Thank you so much for having me. This is going to be amazing. I'm really excited about this. I don't think that I could be any more excited uh, than I am right now. Your talk is called The Gift of Adversity. It was TEDx Como, Columbia, Missouri. Uh, take us uh, behind the talk, and uh, I am just so looking forward to hear this. I'm I'm just giddy. Yeah, it's going to be fantastic. Um, I actually have, I've written articles about this on LinkedIn because people are always asking me, and when I applied for uh, I applied to two prior TEDx talks and was turned down. Um, they said that the talk was compelling, but they were either IT based or blockchain based. So no matter how good of a story you have, if it doesn't fit the motif, then it's just not going to go. Um, I was lucky enough that the people in Columbia, Missouri were very interested in what I had to say. And as you and I were mentioning before, the strongest speakers usually are the last or the first. And I was lucky enough to be um, given the honor to speak first. So I got a fresh audience, got to walk on the stage, you know, it's just quiet as a pin drop. And then you begin and the, uh, the magic begins to happen. So tremendous opportunity, um, 1800 people that were there, um, just so, so honored and lucky to be able to do that, to talk about how the talk went. And, uh, for me, there was so much camaraderie as well in that group. You know, you had that, this is a special evening that is never going to happen again. So all those people become friends, you know, brothers and sisters. And, you know, I made sure I stayed for the whole thing because I wanted to see everybody. I wanted these are my the people that you kind of came together with and you want to see them go up there and do so well. And everybody's story is so beautiful and unique and inspiring. So, um, yeah, I, I really love the opportunity to have it up there and being able to speak and see that impact on people right then is just something that you can't really put into words. If you could bottle it and sell it, you'd be a millionaire, I think. So. Oh, for sure, Marcus. So uh, you, you start the talk off by saying, hey, I turned 40 and I woke up broke, divorce, bedridden, and paralyzed. And from there, you get on to uh, your philosophy and you say that we are only as strong as the pain we overcome. So can you just kind of give us a really high level just overview of the actual talk and then we're, we're going to dig in from there? Beautiful. Absolutely. And you're absolutely correct. Um, in the end, we are only as strong as the adversity that we overcome. And what I talk about first is, uh, I, again, with my statement, I say, you know, I, I woke up because most people at 40 years old already had their life figured out and they're already married. They're happy. They had the white picket fence, you know, two and a half pets, yada, yada, yada. But at 40, I was completely broke, starting over, paralyzed. And instead of being in a place where I could look back and, and look at a victory as a milestone, I was looking at it thinking, what do I do now? I mean, am I even going to be able to walk again? And so I have to, you know, you know, TEDx's are not that long. So we have to quickly establish this knowledge. And then once we make our point now, for me, I wanted to, to channel it and reframe it and say, this is what I've gone through. I went through a hardship, um, but I was over to overcome, over to, able to overcome it, and I'm stronger because of it. And then I was able to reframe it and say, now look at these other people in other parts of the world that, you know, if you're within the sound of our voice right now, that means you have enough water to drink, mm -hmm. enough food to eat, you have a, a shelter probably, and you have a warm place to sleep at night. Those facts alone dictate that you are better off than three quarters of the population on the planet, half a million of which are homeless citizens in the U.S. 
and 50,000 of those are homeless veterans. Mm -hmm. So when we look at it that way and, you know, I say it in the talk and I say it in my book, I say it is so easy for us to complain about anything and everything from our jobs to the weather to our relationships. But the people that are complaining the most do so because they don't actually appreciate the things that they have. So it's very easy to nitpick and to, to find something to be un, ungrateful for and unhappy about. When I was paralyzed and I'm laying in a bed for that long, it gave me a lot of time to think about my life. And it made me realize there was a lot of stuff that I wasted my time on. I was doing stuff that wasn't important. I was messing around mm -hmm. and I didn't have real priority or urgency. And after the, the injury, I had both. So I promised myself that if I ever had an opportunity to walk again, I would not compromise. I would not do anything that was I would strip all the fat from my life, as it were, and focus on what was really important. And that's why you and I are talking today, because I had the opportunity to try to make an impact. And it's uh, being given a TEDx talk is tremendous. It's a huge honor. Very few people get it. And it gives you that opportunity to talk to so many different people from, you know, social media, emails and things like that. But that's what I kind of talk about. I, I talk about Bruce Lee. I talk about stoicism a little bit. But adversity is is universal. So we've all experienced something. And so just understand that it's an opportunity to learn and it's an opportunity to grow if you can see the lesson and, and try to, to look at it from that frame point, which that's why I think it's important to have that mindset now, because if you wait until you're actually in it and the heat of battle, it's too late. And chances are you won't be able to have that enlightened mentality until the fact after after the fact. So. Well, straight from an army veteran, if you wait until you're in the heat of the battle to prepare it's not going to go so well. I, I'm wondering, uh, Marcus, I think, I think Talk Universe is wondering, uh, the, the same thing. I mean, so many of us get caught up in the why when something bad happened. Why, 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 you know, why, why, why? You're, you're on your back. You had all this time. And yet many people in that situation are still also wrapped up in the why, but you pivoted to a how you pivoted to gratitude. What what was the key? Can you can you go back to the moment when you when you made that shift and 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 tell us about that? Absolutely. Uh, I've been doing martial arts since I was 11 years old, and I've done it. I still do them now, as a matter of fact. And even though it's a it's about semantics, but martial arts have a lot of stoicism, a lot of Zen, mm -hmm. a little Taoism in there, and it's all about you know <clears throat> enduring what's going on. So if you have somebody that's trying to attack you, or you're trying to defend somebody else. You don't have the luxury of being emotional about it. What you have to do is you have to uh, remove emotion, look at the cold, hard fact of the situation, and try to save this other person's life or save your own life or stop this person from doing more harm to other people. So that's the way I, I looked at it. But unfortunately, it took me about three months, even though I already knew all that. Mm -hmm. It took me about three months of just being incredibly angry, mad at everyone around me, mad at myself. And then anger that's directed from the outward to the inward is, is depression. And I was literally suicidal, but I, I couldn't even commit suicide in my condition. So, And now looking in hindsight, I'm very glad that I didn't do that. Um, but at the same time, I felt like I had nothing to give. I had nothing to live for. I was alive, but I wasn't really living. I was existing. Then I just woke up one morning and realized that this anger wasn't helping me. It wasn't making me better. It wasn't helping anybody else around me. Nobody want to walk in my room and see this bitter, pissed off guy, right? So in martial arts, they always say that if somebody pushes you, you can push back. But if they're stronger than you, you're not going to be able to defeat that. It's like pushing up against the wall or trying to push against the ocean. So what you have to learn to do is if you have something bigger and stronger pushing you, you have to go through and you have to go through and absorb that energy. And when they push into you, just go with it as opposed to trying to resist against it. Because I had resisted against it for so long, I wasn't able to do anything about it. And once I started understanding that, okay, I'm going to go with this and see what it is, the universe is trying to make me go with this. I'm going to see where this goes because clearly nothing else is helping. And once I started learning this, I started seeing it. And you were talking about the why. Everyone wonders why the things happen. I'm a good person. Why did this happen? Or why did bad things happen to good people? But what you have to do is you have to look at it from hindsight and say, okay, what is the lesson I learned from it? And now you can go back and say, that's why it happened. That's the only way you can do it. So in my mind, at least. reverse engineering. Indeed. Absolutely. Re ultimate reverse engineering. I mean, I can't, I can't imagine 
being in that state, being completely paralyzed, being on my back, being filled with rage for 90 days for, you know, around three months. So, so really you, you wrestled, you were that person for three months and you, you got tired of it and you realized there was an alternative and all of the training, uh, the karate training and the philosophy kicked in and you chose yep. to embrace and you chose to embrace it so hard that uh, you were an advocate. I mean, uh, you got to watch this talk, uh, talk universe. It's the gift of adversity. And you watch this talk and Marcus is a fierce proponent of this philosophy of embracing uh, this, this resistance and difficulty. And he, I mean, it really is a gift for you. It's not a curse. It is absolutely a gift for you. And you, you more than anybody else that I've ever heard or watched are able to articulate how the difficult things in our life actually are a gift. Thank you. I, and, and I, I agree. It, it, it certainly is. And we have to look at it as an opportunity. If we don't do that, then we'll allow ourselves to get tripped up on everything. You know, we'll complain that, you know, this food is the way I want it or, Oh, the weather's bad. It's like in the grand scheme of things, guys, this is not that big of a deal. You will get over that. And if that's the thing that knocks you down, you're going to have a rough time whenever something really bad actually does. Some genuine adversity hits you and you won't be prepared. We've been enjoying this talk with Marcus Aurelius Anderson. His talk is called The Gift of Adversity. And we are going to hear more from him when we come back. We're going to be jumping in to the Blitz Round. People ask, how could I start a seven-day-a-week podcast? It's because of what I've learned from my mentors. Some of the best mentors in history aren't around anymore. They've left hours of one-on-one -on -one mentoring behind in their books. Each month at Classics on Tap, I record a new chapter from a classic business book to help you make a difference. Download your first chapter at ClassicsOnTap.com. And we're back with Marcus Aurelius Anderson. It is time for the Blitz Round when I ask him a series of either-or questions related to the preparation and performance of his talk. Marcus, are you ready? I am so ready. Let's do this. First question, were you selected to speak or did you apply? And you've already answered that. So yeah, we know the answer Absolutely. to that. You, and you applied to how many? You you applied to one place that was a blockchain only? <laughs> they wouldn't I, let you do yeah, it. <laughs> I applied to two in Texas. And yeah. then um, I didn't even think of, realize the one about Como. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, who's this email from? Oh, well. I, I guess, yeah, let's, let's, let's do that. So that was beautiful. So way to do it, Talk Universe. Don't put your eggs in one basket. Number two, were you a memorizer, an improviser, or a blender? I was a pretty much a memorizer because I wanted to make sure that I had it exactly where I wanted it to be. Um, a lot of people have said, oh, well, if you memorize your speech, you don't have emotion. But if you've ever watched a video, if you've ever watched a, a play, if you've ever watched a movie and it made you have emotion – Every one of those lines that they're reciting to you was memorized, guys. Mm -hmm. So it's about the application. It's about how you put it in and how you channel what you feel when you're saying it as opposed to just – and I think the reason why people get to that point is because when they go through, they memorize it, but they don't memorize it so well that it just becomes like breathing, and now they can't put emotion into it. Now they can't put the pause in it. They can't put the power. So learn it. Get it as good as you can with it. But let it go. Did you have nerves or were you in the zone or neither or both? I, I was just, I was so ready to get out there. I was a little bit nervous, but it was uh, excitement. And once I got out there and just started my first statement, I, it was all beautiful. So I would think the, uh, the, the person with the stoicism mindset would press right into those, uh, jitters and, and love every absolutely. second of it. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> That's where it really... it's an indication that you're doing something good in my yeah. mind. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, uh, what's a tip technique or tool that helped you? Um, a lot of people ask me different things, but what I would say is make sure you have your, at least if you're memorizing it, get it the way you want it, write it down exactly how you want, put little notes like pause, draw out, yada, yada, and then record it either on into your phone or on a video and listen to it. See how it sounds even when you're reading it. And then if it's exactly the way you want it to be, now you know what it should be like, listen to it, repeat it, listen to it, repeat it. And then if you want to improvise, improvise from there, you can. But it's about having a really good plan. You have to know the rules before you can break them. So if you're trying to go through and improvise stuff, it's disrespectful to come onto a stage and not hit your time. It's disrespectful to, to the other people to not hit your time. So these people go to a lot of effort, as we all know in TED. There's a lot of money. There's a lot of stuff going on. So it's not about you. It's about what you're delivering to the audience, 
So be respectful of the dot, keep your time where it needs to be, and allow those other people to shine as well because it's everybody's night. Well, and that's huge. And and so Talk Universe, if you want to dig a little deeper into that, listen to some of the conversations I've had with organizers like Kathy Armias of TEDx Portland. Uh, we talk about this stuff at length. I talked to uh, Andrew Munns, who is an MC at uh, TEDx Jackson Hole a few, you know, uh, about a hundred episodes ago, maybe from this uh, episode. Seek them out if you want to find out a little bit more of what Marcus is talking about, because it's really not about you. He's absolutely right. It's it's a little bit, you know, it's it's about every it's about everyone. It's about the ideas, yeah. and it's also about the sponsors. It's about the organizer. It's about all the interplay dynamic that, as a speaker, we don't have the luxury or the, the, the hassle of having to know about. So, uh, exactly. and I love that Marcus, that you said that because you're, you're the first one out of the gate. So you got to be real. If you go two yeah. minutes long, that start, that sets a precedent for everybody else. And they think, Oh, maybe I can take a little bit more time. And then there's less time for the next person, less time for the next. So any, anything else that you would say about that? Just being first uniquely. That, that's exactly correct. As a matter of fact, I was very cognizant of being even a little bit under time because that 30 seconds can help somebody else in the mm -hmm. long run. And one of the people are always asking about TEDx talks. And one of the articles I wrote was called, um, how do I get a TEDx talk, comma, you're asking the wrong question. It's not about how you get a TEDx <laughs> talk. It's how are you, what are you providing to be allowed the opportunity to give a TEDx talk? Now, I'm going to include a link to that article. If Marcus gives that uh, link to me, I'll put that in the show notes page so that you can get that as a resource. Talk Universe. All right, final question. This might be a little bit painful. This is the cut for time question. Since we're talking about time, what was the most painful part? And, and you're a man that, that has embraced pain in all its form, but what was the most painful part of your talk that you had to cut out? Oh, my goodness. I wanted to continue to just... Um wax poetic about adversity and how nice it, how nice it is if you can see it from that standpoint but uh again it's about bringing everything together and allowing everybody because it's, again it's about flow and it's about presenting this this idea that that is bigger than you and if you can help anybody with your talk if one person is changed by the talk that you give We've given our, we've done our job then in my mind. Well, isn't that funny? Because that is the overwhelming sense that I take from watching your talk is what you just said, even though you felt like you had to cut it out. We've been enjoying this conversation in the blitz round with Marcus Aurelius Anderson. Before we come back to Marcus with the final word of advice, got to keep my promises to all of you. I told you I would include a link to show you and tell you where it is. You can go to our show notes page at be the talk.com. You can find a link to Marcus's talk, which is called the gift of adversity. And you can go to Marcus Aurelius Anderson.com. We'll have a link in there, or you can try to spell it and type it in yourself, but I'm not going to take the time to, to, uh, <laughs> double, uh, speak all of that stuff out in the time that we have. We will be right back with Marcus Aurelius Anderson in the final word of advice. Everyone wants to change the world, but not everyone knows the first step. Before you can change the world with your talk, it has to be selected. So grab the templates, timelines, and tools that I use to get my talk selected at BeTheTalk.com. And we're back with Marcus Aurelius Anderson. It is time for the final word of advice for Talk Universe. I think we, we touched on it before, but it comes down to this. Um, it's not about you. It's about what you can provide and what you can give that audience member. Um, you don't have a lot of time, so make sure that it's something that you really want to say because it may be your only opportunity. So if you only had one chance – one thing to tell everybody in the world, what would it be? And do the very best that you can do. This is a huge opportunity. Be respectful of everyone else there at the talk, all the organizers, and yourself if you're going to do it. Marcus Aurelius Anderson, thank you so much for coming on the talk today, sharing you your me. amazing wisdom with Talk Universe. Thank you, my friend. I'm so honored. I really appreciate it. Thanks for listening to Be The Talk. For tips and resources to help you change the world, go to be the talk.com. See you tomorrow.